It's been less than 24 hours from the heartbreaking loss that just took place with the Lions and Baltimore Ravens. So finally be able to dissect what take place. I'm going to give you five winners and five losers of this game. We'll get into the reasons why and what to do going forward. Before we get to the main part of this video, if you're not a subscriber, smash that subscribe button. Also, hit that like button. Let's get to 200 likes in this video. The more likes we get, the more chances this video gets out there. Let's get into it right now. We're going to start with the winner's list. And the first winner on my list is DeAndre Swift, Lions running back. This guy was all dimensional in the game yesterday with the Baltimore Ravens. This guy was running on the ground, but he was a major factor in the passing game. Matter of fact, one drive, it was nearly all DeAndre Swift beating the linebackers, getting past the safety, making big time plays, being shifty and swifty, just like we expected him to be when we drafted him. Swift was balling yesterday, and he was doing everything he could to help give this team a win. This guy needs to continue to be the focal point of the Lions offense. I've been saying it for a year now. If you want to win, we got to run swift. We drafted this guy high. He's got the abilities. Him healthy. He is a matchup nightmare for teams. It just is what it is. And he did very well yesterday. And without Swift, we wouldn't have been in this game like we were. Swift was getting it done all over the field. I absolutely loved what I saw from Swift. He is a major winner from this game. Subscribe to the channel. We're almost to 16,000 subscribers, and with your help, we can get it done. The goal is to hit at least 20,000 by season's end. So let's get to 16,000. Smash that subscribe button. If you're watching this channel anyways, you might as well subscribe so you don't miss out on the latest news and rumors regarding our Detroit Lions. Yes, folks, the Lions linebackers is a winner on this list. You would not believe it if you've listened to me over the last couple of weeks, but the Lions linebackers did a phenomenal job compared to what they've did in weeks one and weeks two. I've been on the back of Alex Anzalone throughout this whole year so far, and huge props to him coming in the game, and he was definitely doing his job. He was not getting beat up. He was staying with his player. He actually tackled it was really nice to see the middle of the field was not getting exploited, and he was a big reason why. Derek Barnes and Jalen Reeves-Mabin showed a lot of promise in this game. With these guys on the field, the linebackers, can I say, looked like NFL linebackers. They looked really good. Man, oh man, it, it spells good towards the future of this team when you're bringing these young guys and they actually stay with their assigned assignments and they do everything they can to help stop the run and get a sack. It was really good to see the disruption. Very good job by the Lions linebacker. The Detroit Lions defensive line is a winner on my list because not only did they get after Lamar Jackson, he was feeling it throughout the whole game. We got a couple of sacks, but the most important part that the defensive line and we'll say the linebackers as well is containing Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson has been running wild upon every single defense so far this year, except for the Lions. The game plan worked. Contain Lamar Jackson, force him to pass the ball. That's how you would win this game. We didn't win the game, but it came very close. And I suspect that this game plan that took place, many other teams' defenses are going to go ahead and look at the film and do what the Lions did here because it worked to perfection. Lamar Jackson did not able to run that much he had to force in the pocket and he was getting sacked great job by the Lions defensive line Ali McNeil doing his thing Harris Williams getting sacks being disruptive and staying with their assigned assignments the second half Detroit Lions was a winner in my list they really did a good game plan they actually took what happened in the first half made changes to the play calling, made changes to the assignments, and it worked to perfection. The Lions offense woke up, making scoring touchdowns. The Lions defense did well in containing Lamar Jackson and not getting beat every single play. The game plan was much better. The assignments was much better. The coaching staff was much better. 
And the Jared Goff, he was completely different in the second half of the game. First half, he looked terrible. Second half, he was marching down the field. Very good job by Anthony Lynn by making the corrections and getting better for the second half of this game. Tight end Darren Fells had a very good game here. He did well in blocking as well as being a threat in the passing game. We haven't seen a whole lot from him in the first two weeks of this season, but he came in this game with TJ Hawkinson being more of a blocker role and not being the guy that Jared Goff is going after every single play. Darren Fells got his in, and he was beating the middle of the field. He got separation, made some big catches for the veteran tight end. He was happy to see that that he has done so far in the preseason as well as a couple games this year. Darren Fells was a good piece for the Lions offense, and he's a winner on my list. You guys want to make some money? Well, instead of doing a lottery ticket, instead of going to a casino, you can go to chessports.com slash Lions bet. That is bet us. Bet on a game. You don't have to bet a whole lot. All you got to do is put in the promo code Lions 125 You get 125% deposit bonus. Bet on a game. There's a game like the Lions here. The Lions were a plus eight. Guess what? The Lions lost by two points. If you would have bet on a game, you would have made some money. So go ahead. Go to chatsports.com slash Lions bet. Bet on it. Get 125% deposit bonus and make some money. Not everything is good in this game, obviously, because we lost. The Lions offensive line was a letdown in this game. The Blitz was tearing the Lions' offensive line. They seemed like they had no idea what was going on. Players were completely free without even being chipped, without it being touched. It was kind of shocking to see because we're so used to this offensive line being dominating, but they were definitely getting beat up in this game. A major letdown, in my opinion. Panay Sewell didn't do as good as we've seen the first two Weeks this season, Jonah Jackson had a rough outing, in my opinion. And Halapluti Vati Vaitai, he had some good showings, but he got beat up as well on some plays. I'm not going to necessarily think this team's a loser, but they have work to correct, specifically with the Blitz. They need to figure this thing out. The first half, they were much poorer than the second half. Still, you got to be able to protect the quarterback and give the quarterback some time. you got to be able to stop that blitz. The first half, Detroit Lions, a major loser here, and it's not even close. They did absolutely nothing. The offense was three and out. It was a lot of drop passes, bad passes, offensive line bad. They couldn't run the football. It was a disaster offensively. I don't know what they had. They must have drank some Kool-Aid that was spiked a little bit. Maybe it wore off in the second half. But all around, it was a disaster. The defense played better than the offense, in all honesty. With that said, there should have been two touchdowns done by Hollywood Brown, and it was just bad passes by Lamar Jackson. The secondary was a little bit rough there. The offense was completely dumpster fire. I don't know what happened in the first half. They got to start better next week against the Bears, but they're a major loser. The first half, Detroit Lions. Flags, flags, and flags in this game. And we'll get to the controversial call at the non-flag throne, but there's a lot of bad penalties. False starts in this game. We cannot have that many false starts at a home game. That's ridiculous. We got to stop with the false starts. We got to stop with the holding penalties. This is getting ridiculous. The Lions need to get control of these flags. I understand we're a very young team right now, the second, second youngest in the NFL, and you're going to have flags on a young football team. But with the errors that we can't make, because if we make errors, it's it's very difficult for us to win this uh, win a football game. We don't have the ability to overcome these errors. We got to stop these flags. It's getting utterly ridiculous. It seems like it's on my losers list every single week. It must get better. Now we're going to go to the no call of the Lamar Jackson with the time expiring and they did not do that flag there. That was a miss by the refs. Obviously we've talked about it game in and game out. Why there's always no calls, no flags or it goes against the lines. This was definitely an error by the referees. Tired of seeing this but this is something that us Lions fans been dealing with forever. We can go all the way back to the Calvin Johnson catch. We can always go back to the Thanksgiving Day game where the knee was down. The throwing the red flag. Everything is going on with this team with the flags. And the only way for the Lions to win this game is you got to pumble the opponent to where 
this cannot occur and affect us. So terrible no call, terrible flags in this game. That is definitely a loser on my list. Will Harris continues to have another bad game. He got beat multiple times. Will Harris is having issues with this defense. And when free agency comes in the NFL draft, we're going to have to replace Will Harris. There's hype about him from the coaching staff in training camp. The hype is illegitimate. He is not a good piece to the Lions defense. And it just, it is what it is. This guy, we drafted him a couple years ago, fairly high in the draft. And he is not a good piece to the Lions defense. He's not a starting caliber safety. Until he shows otherwise, until he gets better in the play in the field, this guy is probably going to be a loser quite a bit on my list. And he's going to be a player that we're just going to have to deal with throughout the season because we really don't have quality safeties. You know, we don't have a top tier defensive safety position on this team. We just don't. And this is something that we're going to replenish in free agency in the NFL draft. Lions fans are the biggest loser on my list here. Losing a game from a 66-yard field goal is extremely depressing, soul-sucking, crushing, kick you in the face, teeth on a curb, everything you could think of bad. That is a bad feeling. I mean, who makes a 66-yard field goal? That is insane. Lions find a way to lose, and this was one of those games. With the referees not calling a penalty at the end of the game, man, this was a soul crusher. And the Lions 0-3, just, I did expect the Lions to go 0-3, no doubt about it. I expected the Lions to lose this game. But it is soul crushing, whether you expected it or not. If you thought the Lions were going to make the playoffs, or if you thought the Lions were not going to be good, it's still soul crushing to lose by a 66 yard field goal. It sucks, man. You want your team to do well. You want your team, they played really hard in this game. They definitely showed they had the grit and the mentality, and you still lost. So it sucks. It's going to be a long season, folks. We're going to expect a lot more losses on the horizon. It's going to be a long year. It will get better, though. I do believe we got the right people in place regarding the general manager and the coaching staff. But Lions fans are losers here because it's soul-crushing. It's a killer game, and it is a punch in the mouth. We got the Lions vs. Bears preview video that will be dropping on Wednesday. Get ready for that. It will be breaking everything down. Analysis prediction video as well as just kind of giving you a look of what we're going to see Versus this game. It's going to be a little different outcome than I've expected, so get ready for that. We got the One Pride podcast on my channel Thursday, every single Thursday at 6 30 p.m. Eastern Time. Get ready for that. A great show. If you got questions, I may have answers. Lions vs. Bears live watch party on Sunday. If you guys want to see some furious and some excitement, come enjoy it. We're killing it lately. We had 1,600 people in the chat this last Sunday. That is a breaker. Come in for this game if you want to see some fun times on Sunday on my channel, Lions vs. Bears.